Hello dear friends, this is Yule Humphreys. I'm speaking to you from my desk here and I have a message for you, a word from the Lord. And I praise God that we have this word that is ever always with us, the word of God which is alive and, uh, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It just cuts asunder the soul and spirit and reveals the heart to mind. And it's the word of God anointed with the Holy Spirit that blesses our lives and gives us instruction and shows us the way. I want to speak to you uh, at this moment for about just a short time, not more than 10 minutes. If you'll listen, I'll appreciate it. And it's, it's on the, I'm speaking on the, uh, on the Spirit of God that descended like a dove upon Jesus at his baptism. And uh, the scripture is in Matthew 3 concerning the baptism of Jesus and the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon his life. And it says in Matthew 3 verse 10, uh, 16, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the Spirit of God descended like a dove and lighted upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Now, I want you to see the fact here that, that Jesus was being baptized for you and me because he was the Son of God. He had no sin, but he was representing us. And we need to be baptized as we follow him. But here's what I want you to see in, this, in these few moments. And that is that the power, the presence, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit came down like a dove and lighted upon him. The Holy Spirit. And the Bible says that in, in Ephesians and Colossians that Jesus was filled with the Spirit without measure. He was filled without measure, full of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God that moved upon the face of the waters in the very beginning when there was nothing and was part of the creation of God Almighty. The Holy Spirit came down. And that precious Holy Spirit lives in the Christian. He lives in your heart if you're a Christian. And He lives in your life to show you the way, to give you peace and strength, to give you hope and help, to help you develop patience and love, and to know the joy of Jesus in the heart. All this comes from the Holy Spirit that helps you believe, believe and have faith. And so we see how, how it is. Now I have noticed He came down like a dove. He didn't come down like an eagle with mighty wings and power. He didn't come down like a hawk. They're flying out there to see what he can destroy and kill. But he came down like a dove. A dove is gentle. And the Holy Spirit is a gentle power in your life. The Holy Spirit comes into your life and he don't just shake you with power. He don't just fill you to where you're just ready to climb up the walls and, and to climb a mountain. But he comes in like a dove, gentle, but he fills you. He fills you with something that you can never find out there in the world. He fills you with the love of God. You have the love of God in your heart. You have the peace of God. And you have the joy of the Lord. And you have patience that he gives you. You become patient with others who mistreat you and who do not do that which you per, per, perhaps would like to see them do. And they say something that you don't want to hear, but God gives you patience with them through the Holy Spirit. Now notice that the Holy Spirit is gentle. He is gentle. There's a scripture I'd like to read to you, and it's found over in the book of 1 Kings in the Old Testament, and it concerns the prophet Elijah. Elijah was God's mighty prophet. He was a prophet of God that that went out and, and did mighty things. He stood on the Mount Carmel and he brought down the fire from heaven upon the altar. But afterwards he was just appointed and he was depressed and fearful that Jezebel was going to take his life. And so therefore he got his eyes off God just for a moment and when he did that and put him on self he got afraid. That happens to you and me. We must keep our eyes on Jesus or else we become afraid when we start looking at what we can do and what others can do to us. But Elijah went into the cave and uh, he stood at the mount and the whole, and the Lord said, Go stand in the, in the cave in the mountain. And he went into the cave in the mountain 
And the Bible says, And there was a great strong mighty wind that rent the mountain and broke the pieces of the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the, the wind. And then there was, with the, after the wind, there was an earthquake that shook that mountain. Elijah standing in the cave. But God, the Lord, was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire, a blazing fire all around that mountain. Elijah watched, but it says the Lord was not in the fire. And then, after the fire, there was the sound of a still, quiet, small voice. And when, Lord, when, when Elijah heard that still, small, quiet voice, he wrapped his mantle around him, walked out, and said, What would you have me do, dear Lord? He heard the Lord in that still, small voice. I want you to know, dear friends, that many times the Lord will speak to you, but He'll not speak to you in the mammoth, trans transcending, tremendous, oh, movement of things that are spectacular. Many, many, many times He speaks in a still, small voice in here. And you need to listen to Him. He's like a dove, gentle, unassuming, quiet, beautiful. The Holy Spirit. And so we see then that uh, this is what we need. Now I want you to see that now not only the revelation of the Spirit, but I want you to notice the manifestation of the Spirit. What does happen to us when we have the Holy Spirit come upon us and fill us? Well, number one, we have the fruit of the Spirit. Now the fruit of the Spirit is important. The fruit of the Spirit is something we need to see and is found in Galatians, the fifth chapter. And here's the fruit of the Spirit in your life. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, self-denial, faith, temperance, self-control, and forbearance. These are the things of the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, and peace, and patience, and meekness, and self-denial. And all these things that give us strength as a Christian, faith, temperance, self-control, and forbearance, all of it saturated with love. Love is the greatest of all. And it's the fruit of the Spirit. And we need that fruit as we go forth to do God's work and God's will. We need the fruit of the Spirit. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to live in us and then people will see by our attitude that we are Christians. It's not only what you say that's important, Christian. It's the way you say it. It's your attitude. It's important. And the attitude comes from the Holy Spirit. Anybody can quote Scripture, but only the Holy Spirit can make that Scripture live and touch it and make it remembered and make it effective to those who hear. So, praise God. Live it out. Live it out. We that preach need to practice what we preach, don't we? Amen. I like the story I heard years ago about the cab driver who took this man home, took him to his destination, and the man in the back seat said, I'm a preacher. Praise God. And he was talking about Jesus. And, and uh, the cab driver said, Amen. Amen. He was a Christian too. And they got to the destination, and the, the man gave him a, a, a some money, a, a, a bill and, and the cab driver gave him back his change. The man got outside the car. He said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You've given me, you've given me a dollar too much here. He gave it back to the cab driver. The cab driver smiled and said, preacher, thank you. He said, I, I was just putting you to the test. <laughs> I was just testing you. I was just seeing if you really believe what you're preaching. Amen. The world's looking at us, Christians. Let us practice what we preach. And we do that by the power of the Holy Spirit that comes down upon us and gives us strength to do that. In Romans 8, 11, I'll close with this word. Wonderful word of God. And that says this, The Spirit of Him that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you. 
Isn't that wonderful? And if the Spirit of Christ from the dead dwells in you, then He will give life to your mortal body. Christian, you have life in your body. And if you're not a Christian, believe in Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit will come into your life and give you life. The life of God will be in you. And you will sing because you know the Lord and He is your God. Amen and Amen.